Welcome to Sheena Power Talk Youth Link, where our redeemed, revived, and transformed guests get real and empowering the youth. I'm your host, Sheena Lynn Hansen, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. It's season three. Glory to God. God is doing an amazing thing, and I'm so happy that you and I are a part of a divine move. Today, I have with me a powerful little baby, cute, smiling girl with me with a powerful testimony. I know your soul will be edified. God will be glorified and the devil in hell will be terrified. Hear what I want you to do for me. Go get your aunties, your uncles, your sisters and your brothers and tell them Sheena Power Talk is on. And guess what? Sister Nikayla Lois is here with me and it's about to be so amazing. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Sheena Power Talk. And we are rising and take over territory. We are break some curses lyrically. We are shake some kingdom literally. Nah show Satan no sympathy. Young people make we grow spiritually. Stop war with the neighbor physically. Draw for the holy Bible daily. Humble a God feet like baby. Tired for see family in a cemetery. Youths them need guidance mentally. Stop abuse young girls sexually. We need Yeshua in the industry. See it and I try to rally why your destiny. Young girl, keep your identity. Welcome, 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 cutie patootie. <laughs> welcome, Nikila Lowers. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing blessed and highly favored. Amen. You look blessed and highly favored, Thank and you. I love your smile, number one. Thank you. I want you to look into the camera and give us five significant things about yourself. Well, I love God with my whole heart. I'm a loving person. I'm a caring person. Mm -hmm. I'm loyal. That's how much for. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm determined. Amen. I love the determined part. That means she's a girl that gonna get what she want when she want it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Glory to God. What's your favorite scripture and what it means to you? Psalms 91. Um, it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I will trust. And that is my favorite scripture because when I was going through it, when I was depressed, when I was sad, um, that scripture was a scripture that I read all the time. It is telling us that if we dwell in the secret place, that God will be there for us and he will protect us from the enemies and he will keep us in his hiding place. Amen. Wow, she did that so fluently. And a lot of people like emergency 911 <laughs> because everybody called it Psalms 911 and I love that Psalms. It was a sleeping pill to me at one point in my life, Psalms 91. So, Nikayla, before salvation, who was Nikayla? Wow, um, Nikayla was a mess. Nikayla was a mess. Um, otherwise called Kayla, I was a mess because um, before I met God, I had this empty void inside my heart that no one couldn't fill. Mm -hmm. I tried partying. I tried all sorts of things. I would be going out to parties. Sometimes, you know, my mom wouldn't, my mom didn't raise me up in a um, what would you say? A background that is not a Christianity background. So I knew I had Christian princi princi Pulse, yeah. Yeah, principles mm -hmm. um, from an uh, earlier age. And uh, that's what I grew up in. Even my grandma, because I would usually go to the countries and she would have devotion and all of that. But um, somewhere along the line, I, I um, messed up and I was a mess. So... Um, that's that's who I was before um, oh. salvation. Okay, I miss. Nick. I miss. A mess. So it's just a mess. We want to know a little bit about the mess because then we can talk about the message. Okay, sure. So um, I remember the first time I gave my life to Christ, I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in church, I didn't know that if I falter or if I um, fall, I could get back up because persons never really put that, um, instilled that in me or made me know that if I fell or if I made mistakes, um, I could get back up because the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back, get back, get back up. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's. That's so basically, you've been in church, you've fallen, you didn't have nobody to restore you, you didn't have nobody to tell you that, listen, this is what, you know, you can, you maybe make a mistake, but you can come back from that. Glory to God, so yes. that was the thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so I know that you have this powerful testimony, I want you to share it with me. Okay, so... Um it first started when I was like, um, in 2021, that time I was like 22 years old, um, Sheena. Mm. And I remember my grandma used to say to me, when are you going to give your life? She usually said it moving up to when I was 21, but 
when I was 14 years old, as I said, I falter mm. and I went back in the world. But my grandma, other persons used to ask me, when are you going to give your life back to Christ? And I would say to my grandma, because I remember distinctively telling her, whenever I got ready for my grandma, he will call me. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was home in the COVID pandemic and I was at home, I was working from home at the time. Mm -hmm. And I remember times when I would just be around my station working and I would just be crying mm -hmm. um, out of nowhere and I don't know why I'm crying. So um, what happened was that um, like a couple days after I remember I was dating a person at the time and I said to him, you know that I'm going to give my life to Christ. I don't see, um, you know, I don't see the reason to be out there living that life because it's not filling the void that I have. I feel so depressed. I feel so sad. Mm -hmm. And the person laughed at me at that time. I was in the bathroom. I was bathing and I was like, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, no matter how me I bathe, I just still feel dirty. I still feel filthy. Mm -hmm. It's like I just feel like I want to come out of that skin here. Mm -hmm. And it's like I just make up my mind and say me I'm going to give my life to God and thing. Mm -hmm. And I remember like a couple weeks after that. After you I've, give your life to no, God? No, after I said I would do it. Yeah. Yes. I remember a couple of weeks after I made up my mind and said I'm going to do it, um, sickness afflicted me. So what happened is that um, I couldn't breathe properly, I couldn't keep down anything. Mm -hmm. um, all I had to do was feed on liquid and all of that. I remember going to the doctor mm -hmm. and they said that I should do a COVID test because they didn't know what was wrong with me. They kept asking me a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. and. I did the COVID test and it said that I was negative. Mm -hmm. And um, after it said I was negative, um, I was there praying and I was asking God to heal me because, you know, I, as I said, I knew God because that's the background that I grew up in. I knew that God could have healed me from whatever I was going through. Mm -hmm. And I was there praying and I was asking God to heal me. I woke up one Sunday morning and I felt much better. Mm -hmm. I couldn't sleep After in my, praying. Yes, I couldn't sleep in my room, you know, mm -hmm. because I, I, there, it, my room just didn't feel the same anymore. Mm -hmm. It just didn't feel like my room anymore. The bed would feel so uneasy mm -hmm. and uncomfortable, so I had to sleep like in the couch. Mm -hmm. That's where I was sleeping. And my mom would be like, why are you sleeping in the couch? Go in your room. But I just couldn't find myself going in the room. As I said, I woke up the Sunday morning and I felt much, much better. Mm -hmm. But what happened is that a couple of days after that, mm -hmm. even before I got to a couple of days, after that I remember a friend that I had from the call center that I was working before mm -hmm. um, she she just sent me a text message this was August 2021 mm -hmm. she sent me a text message and she was like um, I, I saw you in my dream um, you were repeating Psalms 91 over and over and over again in the dream. Mm -hmm. Now she sent me a voice uh, message, a voice note, and the voice note said, um, you know, um, I saw you at an intersection at my community, and when I saw you there, um, persons were touching after you in black, and when they touch af um, after you, they, they would melt or they would turn in fire or whatever she said, because this type of fire was on me and it was happening to other persons but i'm just talking about me seeing that i'm here so mm. she says that when she meet me at the intersection persons were touching after me um in black and they would melt and she says that we they I end up escaping and we went up we, we went to a place of um a sacred place and we all we were holding hands and we were praying and she said i kept repeating psalms 91 verse 1 to 9. Mm -hmm. and when she told me that verse when she told me that um dream i didn't know what it meant because at that time i wasn't i wasn't I didn't recommit my life back as yet. Yes. So I was asking her what did what, what that dream means. She didn't know what it means. So mm -hmm. um Sister Sheena, um she never knew what it mean and I didn't know what it meant at that time. But um as I said, couple of days after because I wanted you to know that dream for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. So a couple of days after that, um as I said I got better the Sunday morning when I woke up mm -hmm. and um like a couple of days after that I just felt myself calling persons in my phone telling them that they need to give their life to christ or if they don't do it who is going to kill them who is going to kill their family mm -hmm. i would say to them um they need to address me as a holy spirit and they would be like um yes the holy spirit because whatever was happening i had to obey and they were obeying mm -hmm. so it seems as if there was a strong force there mm -hmm. so um i remember calling one specific person and that at that time that person was my ex mm -hmm. so i called that person and he was like no this is not you i need to see if this is you for myself and the person came over at the time um, one of the days because he said that he would have came and 
um, he said to me, you know, my pastor wants to speak to you. And at the time, I was speaking to the pastor on the phone, but the pastor was like, this is not Nikayla. I want to speak to Nikayla. Mm -hmm. And then I found myself speaking to the pastor afterwards, and the pastor was like, can you come here 2 p.m. today? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, I can come there. I remember um, when I was at the, I, I went to the church, and I was there sitting down as if everything was okay. Um, I, Prior warriors, they were like in a circle, like they were standing up at the, al the altar part. And I sat on the chair and I just found myself falling to the ground. Mm. And they were all over me. And I remember the pastor saying like, um, what's your name? Why are you, why are you here? Why are you in this body? And oh. it's like, the, the, the thing is like, my name is John. And the pastor is like, that's not your name. Mm -hmm. That's not your name. And he's like, um, no, no, um, it doesn't even matter what your name is. I need to leave this body. And I remember they give him a water to drink they give me olive oil and the entire part of my back was on fire mm -hmm. and I was so weary and I felt as if I wanted to give up and they're like you need to fight mm -hmm. you need to fight you, can, you need to fight you need to fight and I remember being there for hours mm -hmm. and then I got delivered um, mm -hmm. um, right there and the pastor said to me do you want to get baptized mm -hmm. and I said yes mm -hmm. and I, I got baptized that same day that same day so whoa whoa so you 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 were going through this deliverance you you remember some of the stuff but you don't remember some of the stuff yes, yes and could you and could this spirit be the reason why you were sick uh, I think so. I, mm -hmm. I think so. It started off with me the being sick, sick first, first. yes, mm -hmm. and then getting healed from the sickness yes. because I had that prayed, mm -hmm. but something else was still mm -hmm. there that I needed. All right, when, did, when you got delivered, did you see any more effect of this thing, or did, when you got delivered, it was done? I'm so happy that you asked because it was not finished yet. Tell me about it. So, um, yes, I was, I thought I was better now because, yes, I get baptized now. Whatever they're supposed to go and they get delivered. But it, it wasn't the end of it. I remember being at home and I would like be fighting off. My brothers are telling them they need to wake up in the early, early morning you know, and pray. I was so tormented. I couldn't sleep. I would be like up from the night to like 5 a.m. in the morning, just wide open with my eyes like this. Um, I remember my, my stepfather at the time, because he's a deacon and my mother is a Christian as well. They had to be praying for me and anointing my, my tattoos because I have like one tattoo here and like, they are anointed with the olive oil and they're praying for me and each time they're praying for me I would be like throwing up and all of that mm -hmm. and I remember one time I just sat like on the toilet seat and I just braced my back in the back part and it just the entire water just fell out and it just break mm -hmm. and I was there like fighting off everyone and one specific day I was home and um, they had to lock me on the veranda and my stepfather went for help at the time. Mm -hmm. And I remember being there, um, Sheena, and what happened is that when I was there, I, 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 it, it's as if I didn't know that something was going on with me. I thought I was okay. Mm -hmm. And I remember I saw like a neighbor passing and I was like, can you, open, can you open this gate for me? And he's like, no, the right persons will come and get you. And I remember reading a, a scripture from the Bible. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what scripture it was, I cannot tell you, but I was reading a scripture from the Bible. And at the time I even broke out the glass because they, they locked me on the veranda. I broke out the glass and I put on my slippers and went through the glass Ooh. and go inside of the house. Mm -hmm. And I even took up um, the TV to put it, to, to throw it on the ground and my brother was crying. And seeing my brother crying, I just put it back down. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing blue lights because I was, on the phone and asking a, specific, a person at the time that I worked with. Yes, um, blue, when you say blue lights, what you mean? Police lights. Okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I saw a police light and I was like, you know, I feel like they're coming for me. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, running and going in my room and um, I closed the door. But at the time, my stepfather had a key for it. So the police and everyone, the, the police and my stepfather, they were all there and they opened the door and they ended up getting me out, you know, but I was fighting them off because I had a Bible that I had outside, as I told you, I was reading a scripture outside, mm -hmm. and I used the Bible to fight them off, but they ended up, like, took me, and they took me to the hospital, but while I was on my way to um, the hospital, it was Spanish Town Hospital, mm -hmm. while I was on my way to the hospital, I didn't know where they were taking me to, mm -hmm. so he was like, um, I was like, where are you guys taking me to? They're like, anywhere the Lord leads us, we'll follow, mm -hmm. and I remember the, the guy said to me, 
because he, the, the both of the, the persons, both of the persons, they were deacon and I think they were pastor and a minister, yes, because they're the ones that's at my church right now. And they said to me, um, what song do you want us to play? And I said, play Carry Me by Kevin Downswell. Mm -hmm. And that's a song that they played. And um, that's a song that played until I was at the hospital. Mm -hmm. And when I was at the hospital, that's when I realized that that's where they, they were taking me. Right, right. So now, because of this same destructive spirit. She in a power attack. Hey, Power Gang, praying that this message finds you well. You already know I'm your girl, Sheena Lynn Hansen. Today, I'm introducing to you my newest book on the market. Yes, I'm a second-time author, and my new book is Red Flags. Red Flags is a practical guide to identify and deal with red flags in every aspect of relationship, whether it's courting, dating, friendship, or ministry relationship. It covers every aspect of relationship. It helps you to set healthy boundaries so that you won't have to tolerate anything that makes you low on self-worth and self-esteem. It gives you a practical guide to navigate through and listen to me after reading this book, you will be the best version of you in dealing with every kind of relationship. It's time for you to stand. It's time for you to say, listen, I'm not going to deal with any more narcissistic behavior or anything that comes to lower your self-esteem. Red Flags is so good and I know after this read you will be so blessed not only blessed you will be so wise as the holy spirit and led me to write you know in much research this book is an amazing guide for you and every relationship that you come across to i want you to go on amazon and get you a copy just type in sheena lynn hansen you'll see both my books come up you can always back the crown and the cross but red flags is the newest thing and i need your support paul gang i love you so much and i thank you for all the support red flag is out now so tell a boy I don't play around and tell a girl don't play around because red flags it has all the secret ingredients god bless you get your copy so pretty girl now you're at the hospital tell us what happened yes minister um sheena so while i was at the hospital mm -hmm. i remember being there and you know getting frustrated because i was like I gave my life to Christ. Why am I still here? Why do I have to be here? I thought that God was supposed to heal me. Mm. That's the thoughts that I had. I remember distinctly, distinctly that, that, that those were the thoughts that I had at the time. Because mm. I was like, why do I have to be here? Why do I have to be going through this? Mm -hmm. Right? But I remember being at the hospital and I was helping persons there. Mm -hmm. I was praying for persons. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing this lady. She was like, you know, Pampers at the time and she was a grown person and I was like um, Why are you crying take the time and pray because she was like hollering 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 and before I even got out of the hospital She was better walking up and down and all of that But it was like I went in the hospital like the 21st of August and I came out like the, the 30th So it was like one week and I remember the day before I came out of the hospital There was a psychiatric nurse there and she was like um, in the night she they were noise noise was making up in the hospital So I, I woke up and she was like um you're still hearing voices you still feel like you want to hurt persons and I'm like no and I remember telling the, the females because I was on a female ward mm -hmm. at the time they had to transport, transport me to a female ward before and even before I, I get there I was like in this section of the hospital in a wheelchair because I didn't have any bed or anything like mm -hmm. that and I had things on my hands mm -hmm. I had things on my hands at the time because they restrained me mm -hmm. and I remember when I was checking in at the hospital mm -hmm. um, I did a COVID test mm -hmm. also and I remember my mom was saying to the doctor at the front, the, the, the little part of the area, he was like drawing something with a needle and my mom was like, what are you giving to my daughter? What are you giving to my daughter? And he didn't answer. So mm -hmm. I thought, my brain thought that it was vaccine that he was giving to me and I end up walking right out to the, the little waiting area part and they had to come for me there, but a security was there at the time mm -hmm. and I said to him, open the gate, because at the time I had a, the ex was there as well, so I wanted to go outside to ask what was going on, what were they giving to me, because no one seems to have an answer. And I remember um, Minister Sheena where um, 
I said to the, the, the security, can you open the gate? And he's like, no, we can't let you out. You're having the little, the IVR thing, or the thing that they keep to stop the, put in your hand to stop the blood. Mm. And he was like, you're having that, we can't let you out. And I took up a chair to hit the security, mm. and they hopped, the, 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 like seven of them gang me. Who don't have the, the, them foot in my, in my belly, have them hand squeeze my throat, um, everything. Because based, based on what I understand now is that they had to be restraining me from doing whatever to their person or whatever mm -hmm. so I heard a voice telling me stop fighting mm -hmm. and I stopped fighting uh, I, they put me on a stretcher and they restrained my two hands and my two foot mm -hmm. and um, I remember when they were taking me into the hospital um, area and the, the nurse was like we can't inject her and I'm like she's sweating too hard we can't inject her and, and I'm like my nurse stop sweat so something disruptive was there, mm -hmm. um, um, Minister Sheena. And as I told you, while I was in the hospital, I'm going to fast, fa fast forward to the time that I told you that it was like the day before I came out. Mm -hmm. And I told him that I was going to come out of the hospital. I wasn't going to be there um, the next day. And they didn't really believe me, you know, but I, I came out the other day. The other day, the doctor just came and she gave me something, wanted to diagnose me with bipolar the, the bipolar disorder or whatever they said it was but I don't believe in man's report it's God's, God's report, report that I believe in so I didn't even took that report I didn't even say you know that's what I have but I, I was obedient at first because I did take the, the medications that they gave me when I was leaving and I took it for some time but it was making me um, feel so unproductive I felt so weak I, I couldn't I just wanted to sleep 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 because apparently it was something to, to, to um, calm my nerves or whatever they said it was and mm -hmm. uh, at that time I remember it, it happened in August I came out like in September but I got a job in October mm -hmm. so I came out of the hospital and this is the time that I know that I was I was fully um, delivered, delivered mm -hmm. but um, even before I got the job in um, October September I was I resigned from my job because I was like, I can't be at the job if I'm going to take these medications because they're allowing me to sleep too much. Mm -hmm. So I resigned. As I told you, I was working from home, so I had to t t take back the things in and all of that. But I remember when um, I was there and I resigned from the job and all of that. And I didn't want it to go home because I thought I was going to be disruptive and destroy things again because mm. I was afraid that I was going to do that again. Mm. And I remember going to the ex um, house at the time because I didn't want to be at my mom's house and I was there at the time. And let me tell you, a lot of warfare was there because um, I and have you, instances. And all time you're saved. Yeah, this was the whole time I was saved. A lot of warfare was there, but I kept my cool because I was like, I don't want to sin, I don't want to disobey God because he's taking me from so far. Mm -hmm. um, I remember being there and I, I would get like fired from even his mom and his mom would be like, she's trying to do this to me, she's trying to do that to me when really and truly I wasn't doing anything. The, the ex at the time ended up turning against me because he must say, I do this, I do that. So basically just leave mm -hmm. and um, they might go carry my home and whatever and them camera home and I was um, home at the time and I, I was at my mom's house now and as I stated to you in October in September I took the break mm -hmm. from work and in October I got a job mm -hmm. I was now working at the other car center mm -hmm. so that's when I know that I was saved but even before I got the job at the car center and was working there I remember a friend at the time because I was at my ex house at the time he the friend told me that I can visit her church mm -hmm. and I remember going to her church she you know this is the this is the, the good part so I went to her church mm -hmm. and the pastor called her she up me and um, his brother on the altar and we were all there standing mm -hmm. so I was standing there and I felt like something was like pitching me over pitching me over minister she mm -hmm. and I was like what is this because remember it's my first time actually mm -hmm. you know feeling I think it was the presence or whatever it was I don't want to quote but I was there and I feel something pitching me over over, and I didn't want to go down mm -hmm. so someone came and they were like putting their hand like rubbing their hand like in the the middle part of my back and I thought I, I, I fell on the ground I fell on the ground completely mm -hmm. and uh, Minister Sheena what happened at the time was mind-blowing because I was there on the ground 
um, the lady was like speaking in tongues in my ears and she called my auntie name three times. Mm -hmm. So I was there and I was like, what is this? This is my auntie. But I was rejoicing at the time because at the time I was getting delivered. Mm -hmm. A deliverance was taking place right there at that time. And I remember she called my auntie name three times and I was like, in my back of my head, I was like, what is this? But after I got my deliverance, I, I praised God. I said, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, whatever the case may be. And I said to her, um, that's my auntie, because I was on the ground. So I was like, that's my auntie. I, 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 I whispered it in her ears, and she was like, be careful of her. Whoa. Mm. And at that time, that, that aunt and I had a disagreement like a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. We had an argument, but I didn't get to speak to her um, until that same very day. So when I was hearing be careful of her, I was like, what? Mm -hmm. Why should I be careful of my auntie? But I took what she said and I... I, I Did you speak to your auntie? Yes, I spoke to her um, like this year, um, wait, um, what year? I spoke to her last year before she died. Okay. Yes, I spoke to her last year before she died. Like a couple months after everything happened, mm -hmm. um, she came to me and she was, like, well, she called me on the phone because she was overseas at the time. And we, we, we forgave each other. We told each other that we forgave each other and all of that. And she was like, if I don't hear from her anymore, I know what that means. And I, saw, I found myself crying at the time because I was like, what is this? Mm -hmm. I was like, what is this? Mm -hmm. And she said, um, at the time, she was battling with cancer, mm -hmm. based on what I'm understanding, mm -hmm. and she didn't make it. She didn't. She didn't make it. I, I remember the, the day that I spoke to her on the phone, and I was big. I prayed the night in, and I said, "God, have mercy upon her. Have mercy upon her." But I didn't keep praying for her. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying to myself that God knows best. Mm -hmm. He knows why um, all of that happened. Mm -hmm. I, um, up to this day, I really still didn't get much clarity on why wow. I was supposed to be careful of her. But I remember she telling me some things mm -hmm. like, you know, that would make it be like a little connection thing there. I remember she telling me that, you know, she did this and that or whatever. And that was back then. And she told me that she gave her life to Christ before she died too, because she mm -hmm. told me that she got Do baptized. You, would you say that she confessed to you? It, was it any sense of confessing? Um, not really, because it seems as if she was afraid to do it. But I knew deep down that maybe she had um, tangler, entangled herself in some type of thing that maybe would have caught me some type of way. I okay. don't know. Got you. She na power attack. Hey Power Gang, remember to get your book on Amazon today, today, today. No other day but today you can get it in Kindle form and you can get it in paperback form. And if you are in Jamaica and you want a copy of this amazing book, The Crown and the Cross, listen to me. Call me at 1-876-429-6004. Listen Power Gang, you must have one of these books. Come on now, Crown and the Cross. So Kayla, what I want to ask you. Did you think your aunt was at a point of confession? Uh, to be honest, Minister Sheena, I don't think she fully confessed um, that, you know, maybe, maybe she didn't even know of her, um, of anything happening to me. Mm. Uh, maybe she confessed on her own because as I did make mention, she gave her life to Christ. She was telling me that, you know, the enemy had her, but no, he no longer has a hold of her because she's now serving God. Mm -hmm. And I remember like sending her, like she would send me scriptures and I would send her scriptures because I wanted to motivate her that, you know, it's not the end of um, her being sick because she's sick mm -hmm. now, but God could heal her. And I remember the same exact night when I spoke to her, I even prayed for her and I was like, God, um, have mercy upon her. I was crying tears I thought that you know she would have made it but God knows best God knows why she's no longer here mm -hmm. and sometimes I do think about her because she was one of my favorite aunts mm -hmm. she was my she's my dad dad's sister so she was one of my favorite aunt um, we persons would say that we look the same my mom would say that we look the same and mm -hmm. she herself would tell me at times that you know you have a little look at me I see a DP and it looked just like me so mm -hmm. yeah may our soul rest in peace Amen. Glory to God. So now you now you have gotten over this. How has your walk with Christ been? Well, it has been um, great. 
let me tell you that um, when I was in the world, I had this void inside my heart that no man, no woman, no one could fill. Um, when I fully surrendered my life to Christ was when um, I got um, peace, peace that surpasses understanding, you know, peace that nobody could have given me if I didn't give my life to Christ. Mm -hmm. So it has been a wonderful walk and it has been the best decision that I've ever made mm -hmm. and I would recommend anyone to walk with Christ. Amen. So what would you say to some young girls out there that are unsafe and, you know, maybe feeling that same void of feeling but hiding it under all that party, makeup, shoes, Gucci, Prada, look in the camera and tell them? Yes, yeah, so I would tell um, the young persons out there, the young girls out there that um, we should focus on heavenly things because it's going to come a time when no man will work, no man can work. It's gonna come a time when we have no use for anything that we're using now, anything that we're doing now, it's not going to make any sense. Because when God comes back, we're gonna have to give an account for our sins. So I know that you might be feeling scared, you might be feeling that you know you can't do it, but just make that step because you're not going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You know you're not going to be perfect, but once you make that step, nothing is impossible with God, and He will help you, and He will restore you and he will give you a peace that surpasses understanding just as he has given me amen great to god i'm so happy that you're no longer feeling that void i'm happy for your deliverance you know Thank what you. i want to ask you how do you stay rooted and grounded well what I tend to do is that I tend to read my Bible, I tend to pray, I tend to have persons in my circle that are Christ's mind just like me, that will not, you know, lead me astray but will have me walking in the right path. Because they said they say anybody that is not pulling you to Christ and pulling you further from Christ, they're not supposed to be in your circle. Mm -hmm. So I, I tend to have persons in my circle that are Christ's mind, mm -hmm. just Christ like just like me and want to be kingdom persons and kingdom people. and this is what keep you rooted and grounded yes that's the glory to god so you know what i need to ask you glory to god are you social media savvy with your ministry do you share your testimony with everyone you meet yes I do. Mm -hmm. So I have a TikTok handle, um, chosen one. I do share my, my testimonies on that. I do share my faith on that as well. And when I'm at work, because I work in a call center industry, I will share my testimonies with persons because a lot of lost souls are out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of persons need help. Mm -hmm. And they, sometimes they don't know who to look to. But because God has redeemed me and he has saved me, I can now introduce my faith to them. So I, I do um, do evangelism um, out there. I congratulate you on that. I want you to go ahead and give us all the social media platform again. And this will be on screen. Go ahead. Okay, sure. So it's chosen um, underscore one on TikTok and it's K underscore L A A A. That's four A's after on Instagram. Um, you can follow my TikTok handle because that's where I do most of my um, evangelism. Um, thank Amen. you. Glory to God. Kayla, it was such a pleasure to see you came through. That Amen. was a destructive spirit and it it makes me think about the dream that you had. That when 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 the, the, the dark spirits were oh, the, my, my friend, yeah, yeah, yeah my was friend touching had it. the yeah, like they were catching fire. Yes, that's what, yes. So that was showing you that you would have gotten through and you and the spirit of God was protecting you. Yes. All this time, all even this time. before you knew that what was happening fully. That is correct because Psalms ninety one was the Psalms that I was repeating over and over in that gym. I was chanting it. And until this day, you still read Psalms 91 and yes. still love it. Still love it. Mm -hmm. It's actually underlined, it's highlighted in my Bible and circled as well mm -hmm. in red because someone at the hospital had circled that same Psalms for me to read it. Whoa. So that's your Psalm, that's your go-to word. Because sometimes God just give us a go-to word, a go-to scripture. I'm proud of you. And Thank I pray you. that you'll grow from grace to grace and from glory to glory. And that the same thing that you got delivered from, that God will empower you to see other young people going through and help them 
out. I feel I feel like when we go through something, it's oh, oh God prepare us to take somebody else out. We are called to call somebody else, deliver Amen. to deliver somebody else. Glory to God. And as you continue on the Christian journey, I just want to say thank you very much. Welcome, I appreciate your testimony. Yes, and I'm so happy that you're alive to tell the tale. And I'm happy for what God is about to do. So may your you may, may God spread your wings. May Amen. you mount up with wings as an eagle and fly over bad mind people. Because God is going to do great for you. Amen. This is Minikela Lowers and her testimony was a blessing. Power gang, I don't know. It wasn't without its fair share of warfare. But if you know Sheena, I'm going to keep it going no matter what. God bless you. God keep you. Sheena Power Talk. Hey, Power Gang, remember to get your book on Amazon today, today, today. No other day but today. You can get it in Kindle form and you can get it in paperback form. And if you are in Jamaica and you want a copy of this amazing book, The Crown and the Cross, listen to me. Call me at 1 876 429 6004. Listen, Power Gang, you must have one of these books. Come on now, Crown and the Cross. Hey beauties and cuties, thank you so much for being a part of Sheena Power Talk Youth Link. I trust that your soul is edified, Satan is terrified, and God is glorified. If you want to be a part of this amazing move, this divine move, you can always call me or contact me on any social media handles. Don't keep that story to yourself. Let it out. Let yourself be free and free somebody else. Share your story today on Sheena Power Gang. Listen to me, Power Team. Power Gang, we are caused an eruption in the earth. We are called for revival and God has set the nigger and broke out in our life. In Jesus name let it be well. God bless you and please remember if you do want to sow, if you do want to help this ministry monetary, you can always contact me. You can always get me through cash up or other different means like Western Union, MoneyGram, anything and any way you want to sow and make an offering to what God is doing i would really appreciate it there are things that we need as we develop and we trust that you will be generous to us as the lord will lead you thank you so much for making it sheena power gang you don't know how big things are going to sheena power gang and power gang gonna lead god bless you god keep you